For me, I think it's really important that philosophers challenge the very assumptions that we have that are driving the technology, in this case, social robotics. So it means asking some oftentimes very difficult questions. And I think social robots are actually much more profound than society acknowledges today that they are. Uh, we're talking about robots to interact in a social way, to actually engage in meaningful interactions, uh, or robots that are even just perceived as social. And this is so incredibly important uh, for multiple reasons. First, if we look at how the technology is made, oftentimes it can be theory driven or data driven or sometimes a combination of the two. And we're already seeing quite a, a growing body of literature that talks about the problems with data driven technology, that we see biases in the resulting outputs. Um, we have heard incredible stories about how there's a gender data gap, that there's a lack of data about women or the female experience. And so what happens then when, when this data gap is then embedded into the technology. And, and also data-driven technologies have a tendency to exacerbate cultural or societal stereotypes. So this is one kind of set of questions that we have to talk about when we're thinking about how social robots are actually made. But I think it's also important to question the very starting point of this technology. We're talking about creating a technology uh, to solve a problem of connectedness and relationality. And so is really technology the solution for this kind of societal issue? The aims of my lecture are to address a gap in the current literature uh, concerning the ethical reflections of social robots, and that is really to use care ethics as a resource to uncover and to understand a particular kind of risk to relationality and connectedness when we're talking about social robots. So what I'm trying to do in particular is to look at a specific construct within the care ethics domain, which is reciprocity. So what is the impact of social robots on reciprocity? And if we think about, okay, well, what does reciprocity mean? It means giving back. So it's not just responding to other people. It means giving back to other people. So it's the difference between saying thank you and actually uh, giving something back, giving an invitation back, uh, giving proper resources, paying people for their time. And this is really interesting right now in the current pandemic that, that we're in, where we see that certain groups of individuals have been considered now essential workers. And it's wonderful for us to thank them for their time and to have you know, Twitter platforms to do that. But it's another thing for us to actually reciprocate to them, to make sure that they have the resources, the time, the money to do their job, while at the same time not sacrificing their own well-being. So my starting point is to show that social robots are often embedded in care practices today, right? They're used in healthcare situations, in education situations, in home settings. And from that starting point, uh, looking at the care practices and how the robot is embedded into these care practices. I think it's also important for us to think about the idea that uh, robots that are perceived to be social are not only in these traditional care spaces, right? That, that that they will be outside these institutions. So they will be involved in care practices in the non-traditional sense, if you will. They'll be greeting people as they enter into a university and doing so in a social way, telling them a joke, maybe a rhyme, something like that. So we need to think about social robots in care practices, but also to think about the idea that they will be in care practices that we don't traditionally uh, associate as care practices. So then what I want to do is to you know, look at this construct of reciprocity. And I want to do this on two different levels. The first level is reciprocity in a kind of dyadic or relational sense, where you have the human and the robot interacting with each other. And what I want to flag here is that people seem already to be confusing the ability of the robot to respond to commands with the need for us to reciprocate to that robot. And so what I mean by this is we, we see studies with the Roomba robot, which isn't even a canonical social robot, but is still perceived to be somewhat social. We already see situations where people want to reciprocate to that robot, to give the robot a break, right? The robot has been vacuuming all day or all weekend. I'll do the vacuum instead and let the robot take a break. So it's, it's about uh, confusing people into thinking that the robot is actually deserving of the kind of reciprocity that we allocate to other human beings. The, uh, and so what I want to do is to ask, 
right? To ask the question, is this kind of deception something that we should be paying attention to? The second level of reciprocity that I want to look at is outside of the dyadic relationship. It's looking at reciprocity as a political construct, as a societal value and goal that we need to pay attention to. So giving back to caregivers in the bigger picture. And what I'm suggesting in my lecture and in my paper is that social robots will actually weaken society's ability to reciprocate, will we'll weaken this in terms of their ability and their incentive to reciprocate. So in terms of their ability, the reason why we won't have the money or the time to reciprocate to human caregivers is because that money and time will then be dedicated to the social robot, to its functioning, to its maintenance, or to just buying a social robot. But then the second question is about the incentive, right? I'm suggesting that social robots will actually weaken our incentive to want to give back to caregivers. And this is because there will be a growing tendency to delegate to the robot. It's so much easier than it is to, to provide reciprocity to the human caregivers. And this, I think, is a fundamental problem. I, I also think that this is so incredibly important for us to be talking about today. In this hyper-digital time that we're in, we see a growing disconnectedness with each other, a disengagement with each other, which is sort of symptomatic of this hyper-digital space that we're in. And I think social robots will just exacerbate this tendency and will confuse us about what really matters, which is to be connected with one another, to be able to be physically present with one another. The three things that I want people to think about before listening to my lecture are, the first one is reciprocity. So this concept of giving back, not just paying tribute to or, or saying thank you, but giving back. What does it mean in your life? Maybe in a positive sense where someone has reciprocated to you and it really gave you a sense of well-being, of a feeling that you were heard and appreciated, or maybe in a negative sense, where you felt as though you were deserving of reciprocity and it didn't happen. So think of a time where reciprocity was important in your life and the meaning that it had. The second thing is a question. I want people to think about this question. Do you think that social robots can actually help humans be more connected with one another? Put that on the table. And the third one is, again, a question, but do you think that care is a concept that is only relevant for healthcare, for education, or for the home setting? Or do you think that citizens actually engage in care throughout their day-to-day -day lives outside of these institutions?